Wasia Kiwaya Oso Hine Jamawa Mo Yeti Al Ho Dinabao Oso Hine Jamawa Mo Yeti Al Ho Dinabao Oso Hine Hello and welcome to the Pre Discussion Show. Destiny Talk coming to you from the Maker's House Chapel International, located at Atomic Adjacent, the University of Allied and Nuclear Sciences. We're super elated today, and I know you should be excited as well because God protected you throughout the year through the pandemic and ensured that you are alive today. Christmas. It's just a few days from now. And for others, Christmas has already started. In my area, I had the bangers being um, exploded and uh, people in very, very euphoric moods. You can see right here in the studio, Merry Christmas all over the place. And it's because God has been good unto us and God has ensured that we can come your way today. I want to say a special love to my father, your father, our father, Dr. Michael Bodinia Mitchell. We love you so much, Daddy, and we're excited that yet another Christmas is here, and we, your sons and daughters, would celebrate with you from within our hearts and make you excited. We share our love also to our mother, Lady Echa Bodinia Mitchell. We love you so much, Mommy. Very few people have mothers like you and we do not take you for granted we also bring you as viewers the love of the management team of the makers house chapel we wish you the very best in the festive period and they also want you to know that your life is so precious and important that you need to keep yourself in good shape during these periods don't do any things that are excessive that would inure to your lives being at risk god loves you so much and wants to see you do well um, today we're going to look at um, a discussion. We're going to just flip-flop a little away from the cardinal sins which we believe blessed you so much on Sunday. A son of our father, a man after God's heart, a man who loves to see souls won for kingdom. Dr. Sarkodie Emmanuel was the one who brought us a sermon and we can just encapsulate it and say that he was talking about commitment. So today, our pre-discussion is going to look at commitment. But before we go into the discussion or I introduce who to do this with me, I want you to do us this favor. Christmas is also about sharing. So just press that button, click it, and ensure that you have shared the link to a friend, to a relative. And now, at days we have that contract. <laughs> you always would also make sure that after sharing, you call them and say, the Maker's House Chapel is coming your way with a service. The praise discussion has started. So join in and the service itself will start at 9 a.m. And each point of the service will be a period of blessing to you. So we're going to look at commitment. And with me in the studio to hold this discussion is my brother in the service, my brother in the vineyard, uh, Minister George Oususasu. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. You were waiting for me to welcome you, right? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, my brother? God is good. And I must God say, you should good. be doing a lot more of this African stuff. They look very good on you. Thank you. You look very authentic and original. Thank you. <laughs> so how are you looking forward to the festive period? Uh, as usual, we'll be at church, mm. um, celebrating with our father. Mm. And I would like to say thank you to daddy for another opportunity. Mm. And as we always say, we learn daily from him. So mm. the festive seasons will be here mm. as usual and um, we will enjoy. You learn daily from him. And if that is it and you agree with it, you know that Command Your Morning comes your way from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Monday through to Friday. It's not because of the festive period that we are going to go and leave, no. 
this week is, is going to be very explosive. Our Father wants to deal with a lot of things that affect us, our bloodline and things that we do that make sure that we do not become what we have to become in kingdom. So you have to, um, if it were radio, I'd just say keep your dial locked on, on, on the Maker's House Chapel. But please, command your morning is from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Monday through to Friday. And you know the commander him, is in chief himself, sorry, Dr. Michael Bodinia Mitchell, will be here to lead you before God in a time of the word, a time of worship, and a time of intense prayer so that your lives can be aligned to be in sync with the ways of God for your life. So my brother, today we are discussing the sermon as it came from the medical doctor who is a reverend minister, who is a soldier. Yes. And so he doesn't mean words at all, Dr. Sarkodie, as we call him. Um, I encapsulated it as commitment. Yeah. Um, what is your overview of that sermon? Um, straight away from the cardinal sense, mm. you will say that this is another punchline from mm. Dr. Sarkozy. What do you expect from Dr. Sarkozy? A punchline. <laughs> I always say that when you listen to Dr. Sarkozy's preaching mm. and you don't get anything from it, then you didn't listen it. Mm. You didn't hear. Mm. If you sat down to listen to it, mm. you'll hear something. And he went straight to commitment. And mm. It's, it's a topic that is hardly talked about in mm. the Christian because people seem to commit. Mm. We are halfway. Mm. It's like, oh, I am trying my best. Mm. And from the sermon, he was saying that you are either in it mm. or out of it. Mm. You can't be 50 50. Mm. So he really put everything together and um, it, it was a blessing. Did, did you think he was going to talk about commitment looking at the scripture that he picked? No. Um, John, John 6, 60 to 69. I want to um, crave your indulgence. We won't read it here, but you need to make it a duty, not a point. Make it a duty to read that scripture. In fact, read the whole of John chapter 6. There are a lot of things that God will open your eyes to. That was where Jesus fed the 5,000 men. So the women and children were not counted. So it means that the number was huge. There are a lot of lessons that you pick from there. But he came into the sermon where Jesus is talking about the fact that we need to eat his flesh and drink his blood. What is the correlation to and, commitment? And, and that was where they left. Mm. Because how can we eat his body? Mm. After feeding them, mm. we, they came because of the food. Mm. And even Jesus moved to the other side of the lake. And Jesus did tell them that you're looking for me because of I feed food. you. A lot of people are in church like that. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. That because people are in church because of what they can get from the set man. Yes. People come to church because of what they can get. Mm. And so if they don't get what their expectations are, mm. then they begin to fall out of church. Mm. And in the sermon, doctor was even talking about people getting annoyed mm. with God mm. himself mm. because their expectation about the things they will get from God has not been met. So Jesus was telling them that you came for food, but I am the bread of life, mm. and you need to eat me mm. and drink of my blood. For them, it sounded like cannibalism. Yes. To eat the, the flesh of a human being because they saw Jesus as human. Aside yeah. the miracles and all things that he was doing. So didn't it sound like cannibalism no. for them to drink? What Jesus was telling them was that don't come because of the natural food. Okay. Come because of the word. Okay. If they had come mm. with their hearts opened mm. to mm. receive the words okay. that Jesus was preaching to them, okay. Jesus would not have told them those stories. But mm. he was telling them that I am the word. You can eat, drink, and still be hungry. Okay, so what but Jesus was saying is that eat the word. Eat the drink word. Drink the word. Drink the word. So why didn't Jesus just say it clearly to them? Because he is the word. Okay. Jesus is the word. Mm. And so he was telling them, and you know Jesus never spoke straight. Um, okay. He always had a parable mm. that people would be confused. Mm. His disciples even sometimes get confused, and mm. they would go back to him and ask him, mm. what do you, yeah. uh, were you trying to tell us? Yeah. So Jesus was telling them, don't come because of food. Mm. Don't come to church because of what you get to eat. Mm. Don't come to church because of the dress you, or the nice shoes, or what you want to get from God. Mm. Come to church because of the word of God. Mm. Come to church because you want to eat 
of the blood of the body and of and drink of the blood of Christ that is the word so therefore when you are in a challenge when you are facing a problem you will know that the word can bring me out what I have learned what I have studied what I have heard can bring me out but if our focus our our expectations it's material just as the people because they have been fed they sat in their boats and they crossed to the other side mm. they did not see jesus going there but they met jesus they, they looked for him yeah. actually it was like um looking for uh, a pin in in a knapsack yeah. they, they ensured that they sought him till they find him yes my brother do you think that if in christendom that is our motive for seeking christ or god won't it be good the way these disciples who, who sought Jesus did seek him. If we seek Jesus like that, won't it be good for kingdom? The zeal was right, mm. but the motive mm. was wrong. So if we seek him with the right motive, won't it be good? It will be Because it looks like we are passive Christians or fair weather Christians where we only seek after the things of God when we think that something can work for us. Forgetting that when the word comes to sit in us, it will work every other thing in our favor. <laughs> My brother, it, 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 it makes it something difficult for me to fathom when people would have ulterior motives and they think that they are hiding it from God in, in their bid to serve Christ and do a facade of a service to God. That, that is our challenge. And that is why a lot of people fall out of church, of God, because their expectation like Saul mm. going to look for his father's donkey. Mm. His expectation that was to look for a donkey. A donkey yeah. But God has sent him mm. on to meet Samuel mm. to become king. Mm. I believe that our, our expectations mm. should not be on material things. Mm. Because the material things, we will lose it. Mm. The Bible says that if we gain the whole world, then mm. we lose our soul. Mm. What will we get? What would we get? I w uh, our commitment level mm. should be total, should be centered on the things of God. Mm. Not what we will get, mm. but it should be that what God can give to us. Mm. If we are not committed totally, mm. then we will be like the people. And then when the hard truths are spoken to us, then we will say that, okay, then let me leave. Because the reason why I came here, and that is why people jump from church to church, ministry to ministry. We hear that there is a man of God in Kaswa, and then we will drive all the way to Kaswa mm. because of what we want to get, not because of the word that is being preached there. You, you, you remember Dr. Sarko, they had a cushion in scripture. That's how I choose to call it. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, yeah. where he says that that is what should guide us into becoming totally committed to the things of God. You remember yeah. that scripture? Yeah. It says what? Deny yourself. Denying yourself. Take up your cross. And then, and then follow. follow. What, what would you want to say um, was your learning from that? It's, it's the totality of Christianity. Mm. The, the ability, you see, denying yourself mm. is so difficult. Mm. And it, it, it cuts across every place. Mm. Then picking up your cross, mm. then following. Mm. First, you have, and he used um, Elijah's example okay. when Elijah, Elijah left. Yeah. He said that he tore his clothes, yeah. his own clothes. Yeah. And doctor was telling us that it's mm. the same way. We need to also l literally mm. tear our own clothes. Mm. Say that it is not about me, mm. but it is about Christ. Mm. It is not about me again. Mm. It is not about what I will eat. Mm. Even if I have to follow Christ on an empty stomach, mm. even if I have to follow Christ, if I will lose my job, mm. even if I have to follow Christ at the sacrifices that I will make, mm. then everything has to be forgotten and then follow Christ. My brother, you, you know that Elisha was very wealthy. Very. So for him to follow the way he followed, and not to even think about himself, 
And now that his master is gone, he tears his clothes. It means that, Charlie, you're looking sharp because things are working good for you. <laughs> and so you decide to tear and rent that cloth, yes. rent yourself, open yes. up yourself, um, so that Christ will be the deciding factor in what you do. It's something that Christendom should find very appealing to do rather than the other things. And so right now, what I want you to find appealing to do is that you need to share that link. Call a brother, call a sister, and tell them that, Maker's House Chapel, the Maker's House Chapel is online again. The service itself will start at 9 a.m. prompt. And every point from the opening prayer to the closing prayer, there's a miracle waiting for you. Our father, Dr. Michael Bodhi Amiche, absolutely says that it is December. The days seem to be coming to a close in the year. But God is still working his miracles, and you are next in line. Remember, he also says aptly that once you see somebody in your neighborhood being blessed, it means that God is in the neighborhood and you would also definitely be blessed and that the end of your life hasn't come yet, but it's time for you to get that miracle. So share the link and ensure that your brother, your sister will be blessed from what will come from here to them. Remember that 31st night we are coming together to worship, to pray, and to share the word. And this is the part that blows my mind and makes me uneasy to wait. It's a night of declarations for manifestations of all the great things that God has set aside for you. So you know, the Maker's House can be located adjacent the University of Allied Science and you can find it right here at Atomic. If you're confused, you just get to the Atomic Police Station and hit at us. We'll come and fetch you so you can join us crossover into 2021 where the grace of God will be our portion. With me in the studio on our pre-discussion Destiny Talk is my brother, George Sasu. So what is um, to you what Dr. Sarkodie defined as commitment? What commitment is basically from the preaching that came is for us totally saying that it's not me, but it's Christ. Totally following the orders, the word of God. Not for us to think that I can follow Christ at my own pace, at my own orders, at my own like what I want to do. I can do what I want. And he was making an example that mm. I can go to the club mm. and then I can come to church. Mm. I can be drinking mm. and I can come to church. You're drinking water? No, alcohol. Oh, okay. <laughs> Doing your own thing mm. and then feeling that, okay, I also want to follow Christ. Okay. What Christ is saying that if you have to follow me, you need to be totally committed. So it means that if you're following Christ, you don't have to have your own terms and conditions. No. The terms and conditions that must apply are the terms and conditions of the one that you want to follow. Yes. You cannot follow a leader with your own... Terms and conditions. So you follow totally and committed yes. um, to the person you're following. Yes. And I love the aspect that he says that Jesus Christ did not come on earth to build a fan base. Another point from He just that. came to build a team a of team. truly committed followers. followers. People that will follow after what he wants, mm. not what we want. Mm. It is Christ who came to die. Mm. So therefore, if we want to follow Christ, mm. it is by his steps mm. and conditions. But man of God, do you realize that a lot of men of God are really building their own fan base instead of building followers for, for Christ? Oh yes, that one we can't go there. But it is happening. Someday we'll go there. Because the truth has to be said. He yes. said it clearly. Yes. Now, he also said that it is not right to go to church solely in expectancy of prophetic words for you and miracles. You, um, going to church, I've come to realize that sometimes we go to church with our own expectations. Mm. But if God loves us so much, then he will turn our hearts gradually. Mm. Um, so people go to church mm. thinking that today the man of God will give me a word mm. and the man of God doesn't give you a word. Mm. But, but he preaches a sermon. No, which he's, is a word. he's waiting for the man of God to call him. Ken, I see this, this, this. Like then, Ken, I see your hair will grow. Which, which... That one will be very, very impossible tense. Okay. So 
if he does not hear, mm. then he comes out mm. and he says, today mm. I was not spoken to. Mm. I did not hear from God. But as you said, the word of God came. So I think that as we come to God, mm. we should come with an open heart, mm. knowing that God will speak to us. Mm. We are coming for his word. We mm. are coming to be blessed. Mm. We are coming to receive of him. As we come to receive of him, mm. God will surely give to us. So when people come and do not get their expectations, like the ones you're talking about met, they leave the church. Yes. And um, Dr. Sarkodia brought it out from the scripture that a lot. 15,000 people. One, 5,000. 15,000. People left Christ. And I, I, I got tickled by the fact that Jesus did not waste his time going to follow after them. Because he had said it. Mm. In, in John chapter 6, the same chapter, yeah. that those that God has given to him, he will not lose even one. So he knew those who will stay. That is why he turned to the disciples and asked them, will you join the crusade? Will you leave? And they answered, no. We have nowhere to go. So those who left, left because they were not committed. Because they were not committed. They also left because they were uncomfortable with the terms and conditions Jesus was given. Yes. Interesting. So what are some of the signs um, that you can see or you look out for to know that somebody is not committed? Doug gave two. Okay. Doug gave... Um... <laughs> why, are you, why are you excited? You see, <laughs> that aspect that God men uh, Doug mentioned, mm. murmuring, mm. is something that we, we always do as Christians. You, you immediately he mentioned it. I said, mm. wow, this, then this is something I should look at. I, I want you to look at the three together. He talked about murmuring, he talked about grumbling, he talked about complaining. And basically it's, the, it's basically the same yeah. thing. Because we start complaining, mm. you murmur in your in, inside, mm. the complaining comes out of your mouth. Mm. So it is within and then out. Mm. So there is Oh, this one, there is a fasting. Then we start, mm. ah, how can I do this fasting? Well, then you start murmuring. A man of God gives a declaration or a direction, and then you start making, oh, we have children. We have to take care of our children. We have to go to work. Doesn't he know we have to go to work? God was telling us, and God said that when the people started murmuring, mm. it, it showed that they wanted to leave. Mm. And I have come to understand that people that leave churches, people that you, they start having issues with God, it starts with murmuring. Mm. And then Doc added offense. Mm. They easily get offended. Yeah. And I've realized that anybody that murmurs a lot, the person easily gets offended mm. because the, the foundation had already been laid. Mm. And he's just having um, an excuse to take an offense. Mm. Because I always say that, even if Christ did not take offense, mm. my brother, if Christ had decided when the guy challenged him mm. on the cross mm. that if you are the son of God, mm. prove to all of us, Christ would have easily gotten down no, from sure the cross. I'm sure if it is you, you say, uh, maybe there might be a major man Yes. Uh, so you, if you want to say that, say, Then let me get down. Mm. But he did not. And I believe that if we stop easily getting offended, mm. easily, we will stay in church. Mm. We will stay with Christ. Because mm. the one that we are following did not get offended at most of the things that were thrown at him. And I also love the fact that that did not stop Christ from speaking the truth, speaking the hard truth. But you know, and I know you watching us know, that there are certain men of God who have changed the messages that they preach. And Dr. Sarkodie brought it clearly, that we are, we are preaching watered-down sermons to ensure that we have large numbers in our church because we don't want certain people, maybe because they give more money, um, offering and all that. We don't want them to leave the church. But Christ did not stop pre preaching the truth. No. And that, that's what I love about Dr. Michael Bodinia Michel. He would speak the truth. He will hit you with the truth in the face. There's not even one sermon that he has preached that I wasn't hit. Yeah. There's not even one sermon. Yeah. 
There's always something about your life. And you remember Dr. Sarkodie said that when you go to church and every time the sermon that is preached, you don't have nothing hitting you, then it means that there's something amiss. What do you want to share with that? Then that it point? means that you need to look at the church. Maybe mm. you are a fan of the church mm. and your pastor is building you as a fan member. So you are part of the fan base. Fan the base. Church. Fan base. Your fan base, you don't hurt them. You are a superstar. And you know that mm. your fan base, you can't tell them uh, things that will hurt them. Mm. But if you want true followers, mm. then you need to tell them the truth. I, I want, unfortunately, it's time for us wow. to go. Um, <laughs> but I, I need you to share a word and add your final word to the statement that Dr. Sarkodie made. He said, salvation is free, but following Jesus committedly will cost you everything. What would you want to say to that and then share your final words? It's, it's like what Peter said. Christ, we have left everything to follow you. What will we gain? Mm. Salvation is free indeed. But following costs us mm. a lot. You leave your family. You will, you will leave a lot of things mm. to obey mm. Christ. Mm. And that is where our commitment comes in. Mm. And we need to push in and let a lot of things go, tear off a lot of things, a lot of garments that is on our body that is making it heavy for us to follow Christ, that we may be totally committed in this work with God and with Christ. Thank you very much, Minister Sasu. Thank you. Ousu Sasu, I should say. Um, and thanks for sharing Thank um, you. your learnings with us. Um, I need you to remember this. Dr. Sarkodie said, and I know that it is from God, it says salvation is only an event but following is a lifetime commitment. And he also said clearly that whenever you're in a position of advantage, your goal must be to edify the people of God and to lift up their souls. That is what your goal should be. And for us, we are pleased that we have a father in Dr. Michael Bunyamincha who is bringing us up, nurturing us, not just as sons and daughters under him, but the world as a whole. That is the mandate goal. Ye therefore into the world and make disciples of all the nations. And so that is what our father, Dr. Michael Bodin Amicha, is doing with us. And we're pleased that you can hear us, you can watch us, share the link, and invite a brother and a sister. 9 a.m. promptly the service will start. Please remember that 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Monday through to Friday, command your morning hits your way on the Facebook account of the Maker's House Chapel and that of Dr. Michael Bodin Amicha. Please, Wednesdays, we come your way with the Wednesday. But please remember that... Fr um, 31st, yes, 31st, we are crossing over into the new year and we will have a time of the word and a time of declarations for the manifestation of the grace that God has set aside for us in 2021. We're pleased to come your way from the Maker's House Chapel at Atomic. My name is Ken Fiati and God bless you as we go into the service.
Our lives are sometimes defined by how we handle change and transitions. How we move from one level to the next, one place high to another dimension higher. This December you're invited to a night of prayer, praise, worship, declaration, and divine empowerment at the Destiny Arena of the Maker's House Chapel International to make a glorious transition into 2021. It's on the 31st, from 9.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. Adjacent, the School of Nuclear and Allied Sciences, Atomic. Invite as many people as you can, and let's pray into our glorious manifestation of Grace 2021. Our lives are sometimes defined by how we handle change and transitions. How we move from one level to the next, one place high to another dimension higher. This December you're invited to a night of prayer, praise, worship, declaration, and divine empowerment at the Destiny Arena of the Maker's House Chapel International to make a glorious transition into 2021. It's on the 31st, from 9.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. Adjacent, the School of Nuclear and Allied Sciences, Atomic. Invite as many people as you can, and let's pray into our glorious manifestation of Grace 2021. Hallelujah. We thank God another beautiful Sunday morning. And guess what? It is Christmas. Hello. Christmas is here once again. Christmas has come too early. We thank God for everything. And from my father, Dr. Michael Buirinya Miche, and my mother, Lady Yecha Buirinya Miche, and the entire management team of the Maker's House Chapel International, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a grace-filled new year. We thank God for your lives that God has made it possible that you keep connecting with us throughout the entire year up to this very moment. May God bless you abundantly and immensely. At this point, I encourage you to please share the broadcast with your family and friends and loved ones. Share it on all your social media platform. Share it to bless somebody. Let this service be a blessing unto somebody. We quickly take our prayer of thanksgiving and it's important for us to thank god because god has kept watch over us throughout january february march april may june july and it is december and guess what the coming week is christmas god bless us all we take a scripture from the book of lamentations chapter 3 and i read from verse 22 and 23 it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It is the mercies of God that has kept us. It is not by our holiness or by any act of righteousness, but by any act of kindness that we might have extended because by ourselves we can do nothing, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I want to encourage you now to lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord. Lift up your voice. Magnify his hand. Lift up your voice. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his blessings concerning your life. It has been by the grace of God. We've got in here not by ourselves. We've got in here because the hand of God has sustained us. Lord, we worship you 
We extol and we exalt your name on high. We say, Thou worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and a power and adoration. For you, O Lord, have created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and were created. We magnify your name. Thank you, Lord, for the grace of sustenance. Thank you, Lord, for the grace of provision. Thank you, Lord, that you have protected us. You have shielded us. The enemy came to exact upon us. But Messi said no. When the enemy came to eat up our flesh, you lifted up a standard and you stopped them. You did not allow us to become a prey unto the teeth of the enemy. But you, O oh Lord, have kept watch over us. If it has not been you uh, who has been on our side, uh, where would we have been? Um, if it has not been you uh, who have been our side, if it has not been you who has kept watch over us, uh, Father, who would have watched? Uh, that would have watched in vain. We bless your name. We honor you. We praise you, Lord. We say, Hallowed be your name, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. We extol and exalt your name on I. Take all the glory this morning. Take all the glory this morning. Rakoli as a day. He am part of Ozanda. Rekele of Ozanda. He had a Masanda. Rabat of Ozanda. He had a Pedelevesa. Rakoli and Ham. He had a Mosanda. He had a Pedelevesa. 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 We celebrate you, Lord. We celebrate you, Lord. That this morning, oh God, we say glory be to your name. Thank you, Lord. We lay down our crowns before you are, and we celebrate your name. We lay down our crowns before you are, and we worship your majesty, your sovereignty. You are the King of Kings. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Rakon said, for the joy that you bring into the world uh, for the joy uh, that you've given us uh, for oh god it has been you uh, for if it has not been you we don't know where we have been uh, we bless your name dmh we say thank you lord uh, dmh we say thank you lord we thank you for the leadership we thank you for our father's life uh, we thank you for our mother's life uh, the entire management team uh, we thank you for the board of trustees uh, of dmh we we said, Lord, your mighty hand has kept us. We said, glory be to your name. We are here from Tiamat and we are saying, hallowed be your name. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Rakua Sakaham. He had Pelebose. He had Pelebese. He had the Kasodian. Raka Sande de Pe. Radole Azanabarama. He had the Kanabose. He had the Sande de Pe. We celebrate your hand upon our lives. We celebrate you for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, that many fell off along the way, but your grace has kept us up to this very moment. You shall surely finish with us. We bless your name. We honor you. We thank you for the grace that has kept us, our nation, for the grace that has kept us uh, the presidency for the grace that has kept us uh, the entire continent of Africa for the grace that has kept the world uh, when the world was challenged uh, your mercy was with us uh, we say thank you Lord uh, for your goodness uh, thank you Lord uh, for your mercy uh, thank you Lord uh, for the grace uh, that we have enjoyed uh, for it is not by ourselves uh, for by ourselves we can do nothing we celebrate you Lord uh, we give you all the glory. This morning we say, Take all the glory. Take all the glory. Take all the glory. Take all the glory. Rakadonia Saha. Ekalia Sudiate. Mapayata Rabo. Radele Bosa. Rakalia Sentele. Rakapayate. Ia Palabosa. Rakele. 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 In the name of Jesus.
You want to pray that, Father, this morning, take over the service. Jesus. Give somebody a word that works. Jesus. That at the end you will take all the glory. Yes. You want to lift up your voice and pray right now. I am the Holy Spirit. I am the Most High. your glory. Touch somebody in this season of joy and peace to the world. Let your peace, let there be joy, let there be happiness in the homes of people. Let there be joy. Oh God, bring people joy and liberty today. Let the peace that has entered this world let the peace find rest in the hopes of people. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. We thank you, Lord, for where you picked us and how far you brought us and how far you are taking us as a church, as a nation, as a continent, and the world at last. Blessed be your name. Honor be your name. We praise you, O oh God. That let the be encounter, sir. Let people encounter you uh, in different ways. Uh, that in this new season, as the peace and joy enters the world, uh, let there be different kind of manifestation of your peace and joy in the hearts and homes uh, of people. Every troubled house, uh, we pray that the peace of God enter them now. Precious God, everlasting Father, you are our provider, our maker. You are our protector. The goodness of God is what we pray for in this season. Uh, that let people encounter you through today's broadcaster. Uh, that at the end, oh God, you alone take all the glory. Whilst your people get edified and empowered. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Oh, 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 oh,
Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory.
Our lives are sometimes defined by how we handle change and transitions. How we move from one level to the next, one place high to another dimension higher. This December you're invited to a night of prayer, praise, worship, declaration, and divine empowerment at the Destiny Arena of the Maker's House Chapel International to make a glorious transition into 2021. It's on the 31st, from 9.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. Adjacent, the School of Nuclear and Allied Sciences, Atomic. Invite as many people as you can, and let's pray into our glorious manifestation of Grace 2021. What makes life important and people succeed in life is identity and mentality they say if you want to go far you go with people but if you want to be fast about it go alone i would say that probably there is truth in any of the statements but one thing is sure that there is nobody who has ascended to his mounting of transfiguration with company jesus did not ascend the mountains with them why because you see for you to get to the apex or the zenith of life you need to understand and learn the principles of being alone when you want to fly you don't need company when you are flying i'm telling you you see eagles don't flock being alone is situational being lonely is mental human beings are important but there is a place for humanity there is a place for divinity if people are not ready to rise don't stay down with them i keep telling people never compromise your excellence to accommodate the mediocrity of others jesus was not lifted with his disciples when he was being lifted on the cross of calvary he was lifted alone 
when he was lifted alone it, it, it tells you that by one man the bible said by one man sin entered into the world and by one man sin is taken out of the world god does not need multitude to perfect his will god can use only you and so trust in your own abilities god has given to you the ego trust in its way the ego does not flock with others chapel the destiny arena wherever you are this morning this moment in your room in your car wherever just lift up your voice and bless God and thank him for the gift of life he's been a difficult gift but he has kept all of us the power of, the power of God kept us bless him wherever you are giving praise magnify him and exalt his name love on him this morning for his goodness and his faithfulness endure it forever this very morning I want you to help me celebrate the quintessential servant of the Lord, my father, your father, Dr. Michael Bodinia Mitchell. Let's celebrate the man of God. Let's honor him. He's been faithful unto the Lord with you. God has dealt well with him. He's brought him thus far and this ministry this far. Let's just celebrate his life for the good work that he's doing even in the land. We thank God again for another opportunity to come before you. Wherever you are, if you have your Bible, as our tradition is, just lift it up and say this after me. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. I will do what it says I can do. I will achieve what it says I can achieve. And I will go where he says I can go. Somebody, I want you to slap your chest and say, I am a believer. Oh, do it with conviction. I am a believer. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to Philippians chapter 2, verse 25 to 30. This very morning, we want to talk about the attribute, the characteristics, the attitude of a good Christian. How you are supposed to walk before God. How God wants to see you. How God wants to recommend you to somebody. How your pastor is supposed to recommend you to somebody. That's what we want to talk about this very morning. Starting from verse 25, he said, Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you a Epaphroditus my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier but your messenger and he that ministered to your wants for he longed after you all and was full of happiness because that he had heard that he had been sick for indeed he was sick nigh unto death but God had mercy on him and not on him only but on me also lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow I send him therefore the more carefully that when you see him he may rejoice and that I may be less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation. Verse 30. Because of the work of Christ he was nigh unto death not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. Amen. Can we say a word of prayer? Father we thank you for this opportunity for this day knowing this clay, list of clay minister and speak to your people somebody hurting somebody going off track minister to your people Lord and restore your people in this very end times in this very last days of this very month and this very year let your glory be seen in our life this very day we thank you even in the month of in the mighty name of Jesus I will pray it. amen hallelujah in this very short verse we are giving a portrait a picture Get a snapshot of the characteristics or the character that a good Christian is supposed to possess. Now, Epaphroditus was one of the spiritual sons of Paul. And if you read about all his character, you realize that he was a balanced Christian. 
It is not easy for a believer to be off balance in that we are prone to prioritize one area of our Christian journey and we neglect some other areas. So we pick up evangelism and that's all we know. We do nothing else. We pick up preaching. We pick up Bible study. But we forget about everything as we are doing. We set up a church and all we know is church. But you see, he is calling us as people of God to live a balanced life that the world will see and say, this is are a people that we have to emulate. So young minister, when you start church, when you begin ministry, it doesn't mean you should stop your work and concentrate on the ministry because as you stand before people and tell them that they should depend on God continually. Why are you depending upon the offer to, to survive? You must work as Paul also worked. Now young minister, I know yes, the gift of God is upon your life. You can prophesy, you can do all the miracles, but you must also go to school. You must live a balanced life that the world will look at us and they will not laugh at us. Now when I finished medical school, I was already a doctor and I was in ministry. So, and I know I need to be in ministry full time. But the thing is that I still went back to school and I specialized. Now when I started my speaking, it's not because I am hungry and I need an offer. I have my own job. I do what I do because necessity is placed on me that I'll do ministry. So young man, young woman, Live a balanced life after JHS, after SHS. Don't say God is calling you, so you are leaving school and you are going to do ministry. Live a balanced life, go to school, develop yourself. Then the world will take you serious. Now, Paul was introducing his son to the church in Philippi. If you check verse 25, the first thing he said. Epaphroditus, my brother. He was a spiritual son, but when the father was introduced him to a church, the first characteristics he gave, the attribute that my brother. What he meant was that they were members of the same family. You know, brothers, twins will always be from the same father, the same mother. Paul was telling them that, listen, we are members of the same family. We are brothers. People of God, what you should understand is that we are in this work together. So we must stand together as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. There is no place in the Christian family for one brother to be attacking another brother. One sister to be maligning another sister. There is no place in the church for divisions and for factions. I am for this side and I am for that side. There is no place in church for tribalism. That the heavens will be at one side and the will be at one side. We are not of the world. We are of Christ. So he said, my brother, I introduced to you, John 13, 35 says, this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one for another. Let brotherly love continue. Paul was telling them. And he was telling them, Epaphroditus is a brother. Though he's a son, but I'm introducing to you as a brother because we stand together and we are doing the work of the Lord. It's not a competition. It is cooperation. We are not competing together. You may be in a different denomination. You may be in a different one. But we are still brothers in the Lord. We are not competing. We must cooperate that souls will be brought into the kingdom. Let us stop fighting among ourselves, pastors, bishops and prophets, sons and daughters of God. Let us stop fighting among ourselves. Let us stop insulting ourselves on social media. Let us stop ridiculing the death of Christ when he died that you and I will be brothers. Whatever affects one brother ought to affect all of us because we have a common enemy which is called Satan and sin. Your brother is not your enemy. Secondly, if you read verse 25, Paul called him a companion in labor. In other words, he was saying, this brother of mine, he shouldered his portion of the load. His companion in labor. They labor together. If I thought it was even behave like a lot of us, that the last time the pastor called for prayer meeting, you didn't show up. 
The last time we called for choir rehearsals, you didn't show up. The last time we called for ministerial meetings, you didn't show up. The last time the management team met, you didn't show up. If I fought it was was part and a companion in labor. He was a team player. He shared his portion of the load. People who are prepared to do their portion of the assignment God has given unto us. The protocol members must usher people nicely. The service management team must make sure service runs excellently. The members must make sure they are always present and they are on time. We all have part of this labor. We all have our portion. As a good Christian, as a good believer, these are the attributes Paul was introducing his son to the church in Philippi that he has. Will your pastor be able to introduce you to another church and say these things about you? The choir is set, protocol and security are set doing their work, but the member is nowhere to be found. Why? Because Saturday night was a hectic period for you. Saturday night was when you realized you had a part to go. So when you came back around 11 p.m., you were so tired that Monday, Sunday morning, you couldn't shoulder your portion of the load. So you wanted to sleep it off. What are your attributes working under the foot of Christ Jesus? Are you a companion in labor with your pastor? Are you a companion in this work with the other members of your department? It's been said that 80% of the church work is done by 20% of the membership. 80% of the ministerial work is done by only 20% of the ministers. 80% of the choir work is done by only 20% of the choir people. 80% of the management work is done by only 20% of the management team. We will not show even up and when we even show up, we will do nothing. We refuse to put our shoulder under the load when we all have a part to shoulder. There are over 30 departments, but you are not in any of them, but you are a member of the church. You have decided that, yes, I am part of the church, but I am not ready to shoulder the portion of my bed. You are in the church, but you come and you walk out just like that. And you see people serving the Lord, but no, for you, it is not for you. What kind of characteristics and attributes can be said about you? There is plenty to do, but the laborers are few, Jesus said. Plenty of work to do, but shortage of people to apply their shoulder to the Lord. Still in verse 25, Paul then called him a fellow soldier which means he fought alongside Paul not against Paul many people in church are fighting against their pastor instead of fighting alongside their pastor we need believers who put on the full armor of God and go into battle with God against sin Satan and the world but we are busily fighting the pastor and the minister. We are busily fighting the head of that department in which you are. He called him a fellow soldier. Another brother or sister in church is not the enemy. Stop fighting him or her. The enemy is Satan and sin. Let's stand together and fight this enemy. Let us stop fighting among ourselves. Sometimes it's disheartening. When you go to social media and you see mighty men of God that you are looking up to insulting themselves. And they beat Jesus. They slapped him. They said everything against him. The Bible said he altered not a word. How is it that we that we are following him? When we are insulted, we can't just keep quiet. That we fight in the presence of the world 
And now it's difficult to bring the world to the church because if you are fighting in church, we rather stay outside and do our fighting. They fought alongside. They didn't fight against themselves. So he was introducing his son. He said he is a fellow soldier. Soldiers don't question directives. They don't oppose directives. I am a soldier of the Canaan forces. Once my commanding officer give an instruction, I don't even seek. Why? Once he said, I move. That is a soldier. When we are in church as soldiers of Christ, whatever directive the pastor will say, we will question it. Now the church sometimes even joins the world to fight the pastor. You have heard people in the world telling you, you know, don't pay tithes. They are eating your tithes. They are doing that. They are doing. Now members begin also to speak against the pastor. Why? Because all he asked was, make sure you pay your tithes for your own benefits. He perforated us. He is a fellow soldier. He fights alongside me. He does not fight against me. Every single instruction your departmental head will give, you will have a counter instruction. You are not a soldier. You are only an enemy that has infiltrated the ranks of the army of God. You are only a wolf in sheep clothing because when the instruction is given, when the directive is given as a son, you also suggest do it. So the mother of Jesus told them, whatsoever he tells you to do, just do it. Not so among the church of God in this generation. Everything we have our opinion. Let me tell you, we are not in a democracy in the church. It's a democracy. When God speaks to the servant of God, that is what it is. Let us stop questioning everything we do not even understand. Unfortunately, this current generation, we don't even want to fight anything in the world. We are not for anything or against anything in the world. There is this new universalism and pluralism that is taking over the church. It's already in the world, but it's taking over the church slowly. That we will do whatever works for the majority. As long as the majority in church says this, that is what we want to run with. It is the reason why, as we speak, there are churches that are gay churches. Why? Because the majority there think it is okay to be a gay preacher and a gay member. When the Bible clearly says the opposite. Why? Because many and the majority assumes and accept that it's okay. We will do whatever pleases the largest number of people. Why? Because we want the members in our church that we can get more offered to. Last week I told you, Jesus was unfollowed on Instagram. 15,000 people in one single day. And he was still satisfied with his 12. They left Jesus over people. But he didn't care. Why? Because he was not going to water down the truth and the gospel. But in our days, whatsoever the majority decides and wants, that is what the pastor and the leadership will do. We are so busy trying to please the thousands when we ought to concern ourselves with pleasing only one person, Jesus Christ, the one who died for our souls. Now we have neglected him and we are pleasing the masses. Instead of pleasing the master, we are pleasing the majority. Listen, because when all this is over, God will not ask me, how many thousands did you preach to? How many countries did you minister in? What He wouldn't ask me. Or he will ask me, did you live the life that you were preaching about? Were you a brother to the pastor? Were you a companion in labor with your pastor? Were you a fellow soldier with your pastor? Or you were fighting against him? That is what he will ask us because we are going to answer in heaven our attitudes. We will answer our characteristics. We will answer what we did when he gave us opportunity in this life. He will not ask me about the masses. 
I see some Christians. Because of this religious pluralism, we are watering down everything Christ such that you hear even Christians saying it, oh, there are many truths. Let me tell you, there is not many ways. There is only one way to God. Jesus is not one of the ways. He is the only way. Jesus is not part of the truth. He is the only truth. It's not someone you add to your life. Jesus is life itself. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one and no man comes to the Father except by me. You know, I don't really care much what the religious academics and the intellectuals will say. You can call me intolerant or old school, but I believe one Friday, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, he arose for my redemption. I am just convinced and persuaded that if you want to see the Father, there is only one way you can come through, and that is Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, and I believe that because the Bible says so. We will not water the scripture. We will not water it down and accept that there are many truths. There can only be one truth, but there can be many facts. But the fact will not take you to heaven. The truth will. I must stand for something or else I'll fall for anything. I stand with Christ and him alone. Him alone. He is the salvation of this world. In verse 26, he said, For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness. He was burdened with heaviness for the brothers and sisters in the church of Philippi. It is that same interesting word that was used for Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane when he was praying. He was so heavy in spirit. He was burdened with the sins of the world. My sins and your sins such that Bible said his sweat was mixed with blood. What is called in the medical terms as hematohydrosis. It only occurs so rarely under severe and extreme physical and emotional stress. He was so bad and so stressed with the sins of the world. And that is the kind of heaviness Epaphroditus, the good believer, went through. What kind of things are you feeling right now? Are you heavy with anything? People of God, we need to be burdened this morning for lost souls in our family. You must be burdened for the people that are lost in your workplace. Let's be burdened and heavy for the lost souls in our community. We will fill our churches up three times and over if that burden will fall on us for the lost soul. Can I pray for you? I pray that the Lord will lay a heavy burden on you this morning that you cannot sleep tonight until you tell somebody about Christ Jesus. I declare that you will not feel easy sleeping tonight until you have released that burden to share the good news of Jesus Christ with somebody in your area. Somebody say amen. I know this is not the type of prayer you want. And it's very difficult, but you have to say amen. If there is any prayer you will pray, that is the prayer you should pray. For your master in was so burdened and he prayed that his sweat was mixed with blood. In verse 30, he said, Epaphroditus was sick unto death as a result of his labor for the Lord. How can this be a compliment in our day When even your toe is stepped on for doing the work of God, it is chaos. This man was sick unto death 
as a result of the labor that he labored for the Lord. His focus was not on himself, but the brethren in Philippi. We are so caught up in ourselves in this generation that we are unable to see what's going on with the next door neighbor. All it is, is just ourselves. Me, I, mine. That's all this generation is concerned about. There is nothing so immature like a believer who has to have his or her own way all the time. You are still on milk like Paul will say. A baby if you think everything should be about you, it's a problem when you come to church and you're taught to sit at a particular place, you decide where you want to sit because you think everything is about you. You wish you would decide even the kind of topics and preaching that will be preached because you think the world is about you. How immature. How baby-like listen stop acting like the world revolves around you because it does not it must revolve around the business of the kingdom that is what the world must revolve around not about you today you are tomorrow you are not i have seen people in the hospital i've seen my patients i've told them that this you cannot make it in a matter of few days they are gone they are just like a flower you and I, we are just like the grass. Today we are blossoming, tomorrow we are not. It does not, it's not about you. You are coming to church, it's not about you. It's about the Christ, the Lord who died and saved you. The one that has kept you alive, even in these COVID times. It's about him and not about you. Give us a break. Now everything we are complaining, and the usher said this, and the pastor said this, and the minister did this. It is not about you. That was the characteristics of a good believer like Epaphroditus. Can same be said about you wherever you are. Whichever church you are in, can your pastor write a recommendation letter like this to another pastor? That you are in a department and she was taken. You were not told. So you are angry and you are not part of the department because you think you are God? Because the department is all about you? Or the church business is about you? All the pastor asked was to bring your tithes. That was his error. You decide how the church will be run when you have not even established a church before. Epaphroditus did not regard his own life for the sake of the Lord's work. Ask yourself, what do you regard? Your regard is in the number of cars that you have. Your regard is in your bank account. Your regard is about your wife. Your regard is about your work. That is what you regard. But this man, a good Christian, did not regard even his own life because of the Lord's work. And I have seen people regard a lot of things and when they come and they are lying on their sick bed, now they don't regard anything. All they are caring is just their life. And the difficult thing is most doctors are unable to break bad news. I seem to enjoy breaking bad news. Because if you are dying, I must let you know you are dying. Put your house in order. And go peaceful. And when you have gotten to the other side, that is when you, remember, you realize that it was not about you, but it will be too late. If you have any chance and opportunity, today, change your mind. Nothing is about you. Put your hand to the blind church. Work the work of the Lord. Help your pastor. Help your minister that the work of God shall be established. Make sure souls are brought into the church that they may receive salvation. That is what all this is about. It is not about the number of cars that you have. If you have 10 cars, we have one. We all move at the same time. If you had nothing, remember, as a good believer, nothing is about you. So Jesus said, tell yourself, after you have done all these things, that I am but an unprofitable servant. 
Even the servanthood, you are not profitable. That's what Christ said. I stand here as an unprofitable servant. It's only a privilege, an honor that he will call me to stand here to declare his word. It's an honor. It's got nothing about me. So, in verse 29, Paul said, hold such in reputation. In other words, honor people like Epaphroditus. Those, these characteristics, honor them in the church. Those that are spending all their money and building the house of God, honor them. Double honor. And the kind of people we honor in this generation is appalling. The man has three wives. It's following somebody says another wife, but we are still honoring him. Why? Because he's bringing big money. Go perish with your money. Without your money, church will still go on. We are honoring what we are not supposed to honor in these days. People who stand on television and insult the presidency. They insult everything honorable. And we still honor them. They are running down every pastor in the country and we still honor them. We have gotten it twisted. Why? Because we have infused ourselves so much in the world that we cannot be working on whether we are part of the church or not part of the church. Hold such in reputation. Honor people like this. We don't give honor because people have money. Money is like a bird. Can fly away any day. Nobody came to this world with money in their pocket. Neither would you live with money in your pocket. If God has blessed you enough, use that blessing to be a blessing. Don't use that blessing to boast around and think it's about you. Hold such in reputation. Those that are brothers. Those that are companion in labor. Those that are fellow soldiers. Hold them in honor. They are doing the work to the peril of their life and they are enjoying it. And it's even a compliment. How come when you are offended a little bit, you want to leave the church? I see when you leave the church, the church will collapse. 15,000 people left Jesus one day and his church kept going stronger. So this day, he has billions of people in his church. What makes you think when you leave, his church will collapse? Because you are bringing your tithes. Without you, church is still being built. Because Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades cannot overcome it. People, brothers and sisters, let's honor the people that are doing the work of the Lord. There are so much insults on social media about men of God. And Bible said, don't speak about spiritual things you don't understand. You either with the person or leave. But don't stay there and keep maligning and insulting them. Honor people because you see, as you will have others do unto you, do unto others. You hold not your own life. Honor people that do the work of the Lord. Give them double honor. These are the attributes that a man of God sent to a church concerning his son. This very morning, just take this 30 seconds, ask yourself, what are the attributes my pastor will write about me to another pastor? Ask yourself. Write your own recommendation letter right now wherever you are. And see if you are still in the faith. Bible said, examine yourself and see if you are still in the faith. Because he who is standing should make sure and careful that he keeps standing. Because he is coming for a church that is still standing, not a fallen church. He is coming for a blameless and a spotless church. Make sure you are still standing. Judge yourself, as Bible said, that you will not be judged. Judge yourself and let's pick up a paper. List your own attributes that you live in the church with. God bless you. As you can list your attributes. List your attributes based on your own wall. And every day look at what you do. Whether it conforms to what you have written. 
Thank God for as far as brought us. You are watching me from all over, wherever. If you want to give yourself to Christ, we are in festive season. The season that he was born, that he will bring salvation unto us. Wherever you are, if you are backslidden, if you have not been a brother, if you have not been a fellow soldier, if you have not been a companion in labor, wherever you are, you want to give yourself to Christ, let's lift up your hands and let's pray together. Say these words after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe I'm a sinner. I believe I'm a sinner. sinner. For my sake, you came to die. For, For my sake, sake you, you came, came to die. And on the third day, you arose. On, on the, the third, third day, you arose. This day, I accept you. This day, I accept you. As my Lord and personal Savior. As, as my Lord and personal, personal Savior. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. That I will serve you. That, that I will serve, serve you all the days of my life. All, all the days, days of, of my life. life. Even in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 If you have prayed this prayer, we have our numbers on the screen. Call us. If you are far away, you are not too sure which church to go, just call us. We will direct you. A church nearby, that is a proper Bible-believing church. Not those other churches that are pouring sand to the ministry business. You call us. We will direct you. If you are close by, you can always join us. The Maker's House Chapel, Destiny Arena, in Kwabinya. Baker's house, the Hope Arena in East Lebanon. Thank God for your life. Wherever you are, lift up your offer tree. Like my father will always say, no worship is complete without sacrifice. It must cost you something. It costs Jesus his entire life. What are you prepared for it to cost you? Lift up a seed. Lift up an offering. That he has seen you through this whole year in the midst of death over 1.5 million people dead because of a tiny virus we can't see and you are still alive it is not because of your energy or your immunity he kept you alive lift up your seed uh, the portals to are on the screen you can send if you want to do it via Mumbo or USSD whichever one they are on the screen Father we thank you and bless you for this opportunity to give unto you you give your all we give this little unto you as part of our effort in labor for ministry. As we drop it, Lord, under your feet, may you multiply it back unto us that we may even have more to give unto you. We thank you and bless you. Even in the mighty name of Jesus, have you prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God and we thank him for your life, for joining us, for how far he's brought you. And though he will keep you. His father has kept you from January until now. He will keep you even into 2000. 2021. Just so you know, on 31st night, we will be having our 31st watch night in this very same chapel. We invite everybody all over. For those of you that have been joining us on our morning devotion, we invite you on 31st. Just come around. Those that have called that you wanted to come and see, Papa, just come around on 31st night. We'll be available for the direction of God. The night of worship, prayer, glory, it's going to be a wonderful night. So we invite you to the first night. Don't stay in the pub. Don't stay on the streets. Don't stay outside. Make sure you enter the new year with the grace of God. Make sure you enter right so that you can end right. We invite all of you. Also remember tomorrow morning through Friday morning, our morning devotion. Command your morning. We'll come your way. Make a date with us on Wednesday. We have our Wednesday live as well. Papa will be on Make sure you join us as we all put our shoulder to the portion that is left for us. No one will carry your portion for you. Make sure you carry that load God has given unto you. He said, bring me your load which is heavier. Take my own which is lighter. He has given you a lighter one to carry. If you are unable to carry that load, in other words, you are an irresponsible servant. And he told him, take that one from him and give it to the one who had two. Because he who have anything more will be given. But if you do not have, even the letter that you have will be taken away from you. You alone and no one will have to bear that burden. That light load, you alone will have to carry it. Again, we thank God for your life. We bless you. We meet once more again next week. Can we pray and close in the service? Father, we thank you. We bless you for this opportunity and for your word. May we be doers of your word as it comes unto us. Amen. May your word restore us. 
May you bring us back onto that narrow path that leads to your kingdom. Amen. Anyone of us that have left that road, may you bring us back. Amen. All of us that are standing, may you establish us least we fall. Jesus. If anybody has fallen, Lord, by your name, we call him up. Amen. Bible said, if men who say there's a casting down, who say there's a lifting up, Amen. we'll lift up anyone that is fallen. Any feeble knee, Lord, shall we strengthen. Jesus. May you see us through the rest of this very year. Amen. That we'll see the goodness you have for us even in the coming year. Amen. Now unto him alone, that is glorious. May he bless you. Amen. May his face shine upon you. Amen. May he establish your feet upon the rock. Amen. May your forehead be stronger than that of your enemies. Amen. As far as the east is separated from the west, Jesus. so do we separate you from any calamity yes. in this very season. When Jesus. humans will be sacrificed unto God, Jesus. you cannot be sacrificed unto any God. Yes. But Lord. you will live. Jesus. Declare his good works. Yes. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen. And may he keep you. Amen. Until we meet again. Yes, Lord. You are richly blessed. Amen. Amen. Our lives are sometimes defined by how we handle change and transitions. How we move from one level to the next, one place high to another dimension higher. This December you're invited to a night of prayer, praise, worship, declaration, and divine empowerment at the Destiny Arena of the Maker's House Chapel International to make a glorious transition into 2021. It's on the 31st, from 9.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. Adjacent, the School of Nuclear and Allied Sciences, Atomic. Invite as many people as you can, and let's pray into our glorious manifestation of Grace 2021. I know the words that God has placed in our mouth for you had been inspiring, motivating, had been uplifting, had been very revelatory unto you. And therefore, I urge you, subscribe to us on YouTube, like our page on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram or Twitter. And therefore, I say that you should join us, subscribe to my YouTube channel, just like my page, like the page of the church, like the page of the BN Michael Ministries, and follow us on Instagram as well. Follow us everywhere you can follow us because through all those mediums, God has given us a word to bring to you. And until you subscribe, until you follow, until you like, you'll never be able to get them. So subscribe, follow, and like us on all the social media platforms and your life will never be the same. God bless you, even as you do this. Thank you.